So, before writing any code, let's check out the difference between the start and update methods. In Unity, the start and update methods are part of the mono behavior lifecycle, which Unity uses to manage component behavior in scenes. The start method runs only once at initialization, meaning just before the first frame update. It's great for initialization tasks. On the other hand, the update method runs every frame, making it ideal for operations that need to happen continuously, like checking for user input, running animations, or updating game logic. To see this in action, let's log some text in the update method. When you run the game, you'll notice it runs continuously. You'll see the numbers increasing here, showing how often it's running. By default, Unity collapses the same output, but you can toggle this button to show all output or collapse them. Now, let's try accessing a variable named guess from the update method. If we write guess inside update, we get an error saying, the name guess doesn't exist in the current context. This happens because we haven't created guess inside update, it's actually in start. Variables can't be accessed outside their scope, meaning if we define a variable inside any curly braces, it's only available within them. Here's where global variables come in. To access variables across all methods or functions, we declare them outside any method. In our case, let's move these three variables outside of start so we can access them from other methods too. Now the error is gone, and when we run our game, we'll see the output 50 running multiple times. Next, to access the keyboard we're currently using, we'll create a variable called keyboard of type keyboard. We'll declare it first, and in the start method, we'll set keyboard to the current keyboard. To check any condition in c -sharp, we use an if statement. It runs the code only if the condition is true. Let's check if the user presses the zero key on the keyboard. Since there are two zero keys, one in the alphanumeric section and another on the numpad, the user could press either. In this case, we'll use the OR operator. To check it, we write, if keyboard.digit zero key was pressed this frame or keyboard.numpad zero key was pressed this frame. If this condition is true, we'll set guess to zero. But we'll run into an error here because we initially declared guess as an integer. To fix this, we need to modify it to store a string, allowing it to handle text instead. We'll do the same for one. And finally, if the player presses the enter key, we'll log their guess. Let's play and check. When I enter zero, it logs zero, and for one, it's working too. But there's an issue. If we press 11 or any number multiple times, it only prints a single digit. So we need to write plus equals here, which means guess equals guess plus zero. By using the plus operator, it concatenates the string, so any digit pressed from the keyboard is added to the guess variable. And remember, this is not a sum, it's just adding the text one after another. Also, we'll clear the guess after showing it in the console. We'll complete our checks for key presses from numbers two through nine the same way. Now it's ready. When we play, we can hit any number and press enter to show it in the console. How's everyone doing with this? We'll improve these if statements in our upcoming lecture. Until then, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel.